Hello, my name is Bruce Renfro. We will be discussing bevel cutting today. A little background on me first. I have been a project manager here at Sigma Tech for the past 15 years. I specialize in CAD CAM consultation and on-site project implementation. I've been closely involved with the evolution of our bevel functionality throughout the years. You will see a brief PowerPoint presentation today about beveling along with a walkthrough of how our software can assist with programming the various beveling machines out in the marketplace today. We probably have a wide variety of users online with us today, so I will try to hit the middle of the group and hopefully everybody can leave with some new information. Some of the topics that we're going to cover today, common bevel cutting problems, talk about any machine specific issues, pre-cutting steps, talk about some best practices, and beveling software. Let's start with common bevel cutting problems. If some of you have beveled in the past, you're probably very familiar with some of these, but one of which would be poor edge quality, or another one might be too difficult to program. A big one, and probably the most common, is the, rep the repeatability of cutting your parts. And lastly, maybe it just takes too much time to program. We will discuss recommendations of how to solve these problems and the topics that follow. Let's talk about machine specific or even better yet talk about process specific issues. No matter really what your machine is, all machines need to be calibrated correctly. And if you have a tip on that machine, it needs to be aligned. So tip alignment is a big deal and you should do that at least once a day. If you have a plasma bevel machine, your machine needs to pass a concentricity test. This test is basically a 360 degree rotation test focusing on a single point. And obviously with plasma, you need to have some fresh consumables. If you have an oxyfuel cutting machine, you always need to check the tip before starting your bevel job. If you have a laser machine, a laser bevel, that also needs to pass a concentricity test. And of course, that's assuming the focus has already been dialed in. If you have a water jet machine, one of the problems you could have is with the cutting abrasive or the garnet building up on the top of the plate because a water jet bevel machine a lot of times has a physical foot that rides on top of the plate and when that foot can't ride on the top surface but it's riding up on the garnet layer then you don't get a true reading of where the top of the plate actually is. Alright, let's talk about some pre-cutting steps. Anytime you have a new bevel type or a new bevel angle, I would recommend testing the cut on a 6x6 coupon first. Take that coupon and apply your bevel type or angle to just one edge. Now if the straight cut has already been tested, then I can assume that these three straight edges are already correct, the three eye cuts. So when we cut the bevel, or cut the coupon, if the part is dimensionally incorrect, then we focus in on the bevel parameters. When we do that, the first thing to look at is edge quality. What's the quality of the cut? If it needs to change, make the necessary feed rate changes. Next is bevel angle. Make any bevel angle changes that you need. If you want a 45 degree, 
It is common to have to tell the machine to do a 48 degree bevel so that you'll get a 45. We can handle this in our software. There's a angle column and a programmed angle column. So if you desire a 45, you tell the machine to, to do a 48. Next is kerf. You can make any bevel kerf changes that you need. We can again handle this in the software. And each bevel type and bevel angle has its own unique kerf value. One of the questions that came in online was can you explain each of the kerf settings in the table? Top knife, bottom knife, etc. So we have four columns of kerf tables and, and you'll see that on the right hand side. Any top knife bevel would be this bottom section or, or this first column. If it's a bottom knife, that would be the second column. Now if you have a combination bevel, and a combination bevel would be a land bevel, and people call it different things, but this third row down here is for a top bevel that has a land on it. And in our world we call it a top land bevel. So the fourth one is similar, or a bottom land bevel. And we will see what these look like in the software here in a second. Another question that came in was about bevel lead-ins. Can we adjust those lead-ins from our uh, table? The answer is yes, and it's really in this same table that we'll take a longer look at here in a second, but it's in more of the columns off to the right, and you can set the lead-ins and lead-outs of your bevels. Let's talk briefly about best practices and just recap a little bit about what we talked about already. First of which, and most important, calibrate the machine. Next, fresh consumables. And we always recommend that to at least be every day. Or if you're doing lots of bevel cutting or bevel testing, that can be done at the beginning of every shift. Thirdly, make sure the plate is flat on the bed. Then cut bevel coupons like we described. Would also recommend to go in this order. Number one, adjust the feed rate as needed, adjust the bevel angle as needed, and thirdly, adjust the kerf. If you don't go in this order and you adjust the feed rate at the very end, then that can and will change the bevel angle and the kerf. So it's easier to do it in this order. After that, you can save these values. And again, these values are saved in our database. And you can also verify these bevels to let you know that this bevel type and angle is good to go on future parts. And if you follow these steps, and you do it on a $4 coupon part, you should feel confident that your $1,200 production part will be cut correctly. All right, let's look at some of these things in the software. What I'm showing today is our latest Sigma S version 10. And let's start with just a quick demo of a quick six step process to get a bevel nest cut and we'll start with a standard shape start with a rectangle or a square let's do a 10 by 10 automatically makes it into a part I want to make my material mild steel one inch thick Put it on my beveling machine, and in this case, it's a plasma. 
set my number to nest here to 10. I can change my due date here if I choose. I can have lead ins and lead outs. And since I'm on a plasma machine, I want to have my correct amperage set. Once everything's good to go here, I can double click on my image. And it brings you into what we call part mode. And this is the place where you apply your bevel attributes. And this is the icon to do that. So I click the icon, click on the edge that I want the bevel on, right click, and here's the menu. Up at the top, you have some options. We've talked about a few of these types already, but here's our top knife and the angle that you could associate with that. And the image should change. Here's the bottom knife. We do a 45 on that. And then for the land bevels, let's do a 45 degree. And my nose size is 0.5. And that's the side profile of my top land bevel. And then you have bottom land. So I'll also do the same on these. And then even for K bevels, or some people call them X bevels if it's only a two pass. But here's a three sided K bevel. Or if you wanted an X bevel, you can just create it without a land in the middle. Okay. But let's do this one with an actual three pass. Okay. Click OK. So there's my bevel. Let's put one more on there. Let's put a knife bevel on this edge, just so I have two different bevels and hit close. So at this point my part now has all the bevel attributes assigned to it. So let's go make a nest. Select your part over in your task parameters so you can set your sheet size. Make sure you're on the right bevel machine and in our case it's our MG plasma. You want nest bevels to be turned on to yes, and we'll look at why that's important here in a second. Click OK. And then auto nest. Okay. Next step is to apply the toolpath. Auto NC. Hit OK. Now here's all my bevel toolpath. It has all the corner loops automatically applied to transition to head from one contour to the next. We call these bevel corner loops. One of the questions that we had was, can I simulate this toolpath and see what the code looks like? The answer is yes. We have a little play button up here and you can scroll down this list and actually watch the toolpath happen. Or you can actually click the NC button and this will show you the exact machine code that's going to be sent to the floor. Another question that came in and it talks specifically about this type of bevel and let me zoom in on this we call this a K bevel and the question was which edge or which cut is cut first um, we've got a few different ways to program but one that we recommend is what we call bottom up cutting so if you look at the side view of this profile this is going to be three individual plasma cuts. And from the bottom up, obviously here, our first pass is going to be this bottom bevel. Next pass is going to be the eye cut. And lastly, the top bevel. 
and we do this for one reason. If we were to start with the top bevel first, then come back with the eye cut for the second pass, this eye cut will cut through the plate, then cut through an opening, so it's going to hit air, and then re-engage the metal, which does not give, uh, number one, it doesn't give a clear cut, or a good cut. Number two, it's really hard to control with kerf because this will be cut in a different way with a different type of kerf, meaning you'll meet, need more or less kerf if you cut through air compared to if you didn't. So bottom up cutting means that you'll always be cutting through full material as you cut the desired edge. Let's talk a little bit about bevel balloons. This bevel balloon right here is green, and in version 10, we've added a few more options. Close out of this workspace and open up another one. We have four different colors. In version 10, it's been asked that we incorporate the ability to know if a bevel has been verified or not. So in our technology table, which I'm going to show you where that is now, if you go into Tools Help Technology Setup, the MG machine that we were just on has a bevel lookup table. And again, we were on 400 amp and our part was one inch. So these two verified columns that we mentioned earlier have two options, true or false. So if you're cutting bevel coupons and you've dialed in, let's say, 35 degrees and you verified this top knife kerf along with this programmed angle, along with that feed rate and that comes out to be a good quality part, then I'm going to verify that by saying that's true. If that's true, then that'll change the color of my bevel bubbles. So let's go back there and take a look. The four different colors again. Green, in my case, means that it's been verified. It's, it's good to go. Red, it says not verified, but that means that I have a 45 degree line in my tech table and it is not verified. So it says false. Now contrasting these two to the two interpolated verified, what this means is that Sigmund looked in the table for a 28 degree bevel. It didn't find one, but it did find the nearest neighbor, and let's say that it was a 30 degree, and it was verified. So we're going to say that's an interpolated verified bevel. And it'll interpolate the values for kerf, feed rate, and angle. Comparing that to this guy, the interpolated not verified, it also did not find a 28 degree bevel in the table, and its nearest neighbor was also not verified. So this is just a nice, easy, graphical way to see which angles need to have coupons cut and which don't. Let's talk a little bit about importing bevel parts. We can import both 2D and 3D. Let's talk about 2D parts first. Let's talk about bringing in a DXF that has some text attached to it. And I'll zoom in on this part just to show you. But here's a, a DXF that has some verbiage on it and it's close to the entity that it needs to add information to. So this top line here 
we're, we're going to look at this piece of text and it's going to translate this into bevel attributes automatically. So I've got some others over here. I think these two are going to translate into a land bevel. Alright, let's take a look. Alright, mild steel, one inch, same global plasma machine, same 400 amp, I'm good to go. Double click on the image, and here's my bevel angles pre assigned to my part. There's a top bevel with a land bottom bevel or a top bevel just a smaller land now if I wanted to verify these bevels to see which ones need to have coupons cut on them first under the bevel icon we've added verify bevel status and then you can quickly see which ones need to be recut or tested and which ones are already uh, good to go all right, so we call that text to bevel. That's a function that SigmaNest can do automatically. All right, let's jump over to 3D. And when it comes to importing parts from 3D solid model packages, that SolidCAD application needs to be installed on the on this PC. So it. In this demo, we have SolidWorks installed. Let's look at the version. 2014. And I just brought you in here to show you a sample part. There's an end here that has a nice K bevel on it. And there's a blind bevel here. The top bevel at the land. We're going to import that part, and we can do it from within Sigma Nest. You can go to the appropriate solid import, in this case SolidWorks. You can highlight your parts that you want to bring in. We're going to bring in three of them. Okay. So here's my three parts. I can change things from this screen if I want to change the material thickness of each part. But here's the one that we just looked at in SolidWorks. Let's take a closer look at that in Sigma Nest. If I double click on the part, it brings you into part mode. We have another option in here for move bevel balloons, which comes in handy if you wanted to manage these things a little bit better. So here's our blind top bevel with the land, and here's our three pass bevel on the bottom. So bevel attributes automatically from SolidCAD. Now we do support the big five. SolidWorks, as you've seen, we can import parts up to 2014. If you have Solid Edge, we can go up to ST5. If you have Pro-E, we can import both Wildfire up to V5 and Creo up to V2. If you have Inventor, we can import into 2014. And if you have Siemen products, we support NX up to NX8. One of the questions that we had online was, can we import solid models from CATIA? The answer is yes, we can import 3D solid parts from CATIA V5 when using the Sigma Nest unfolder, but that does not include bevel attributes. So, so the solids will come in fine just without the bevels. Let's 
shift gears here to a little bit of oxy fuel cutting. When we took the online poll, quite a few of the participants had oxy fuel. And oxy fuel cutting is a little bit different in that it, it has three oxy fuel cutting heads that can cut at the same time and it can create a three-sided bevel pass with one cut. So here's a sample part. I have a couple X bevels. Well, I have three of them and they're all different slightly. And I'm going to cut this on my oxy fuel machine. The six step process in Sigma S is the same. I just put this on a smaller blank, but let me clear off the tool path here and auto and see it again. With an oxy fuel cutting machine or a triple bevel, you'll notice these little rectangular boxes. These are for what we call a window torch that's also attached to the gantry and that window torch its only purpose is to cut out these boxes so once the boxes have been removed or they fall into the table then the fancy bevel head comes into play it'll be brought over into position it'll light within these boxes so the triple bevel really doesn't do any piercing of any kind because you don't want any um, molten metal to splash up on the on the movements of the bevel head. So this is the tool path. We can manipulate this tool path if we choose. One of the options that we can do is move bevel lead in and lead out. You can click on one of the contours. In case you wanted to do an edge start on this bevel you can drag those window boxes off the plate. And then you can also delete bevel window. You can even move the internal if I chose to do so. This part is ready to post. So this is the process of creating the NC file for the machine. It has some questions along the way for this specific machine. It says that it's successful and I click done. So this program is ready to cut. If you needed paperwork or a traveler, you can go into print, preview, Here's the report that it brought up. It says that it's going to take 35 minutes to cut this plate. But let's say that at the last moment this machine goes down and this is a hot part that needs to go out today. One of the things you can do in nesting, you don't really need to re-nest or do anything. You just go back into the task parameters, change your machine from a triple Oxy fuel to a single plasma, take in the parameters from that specific machine, click OK. You do need to re NC to get the new toolpath for that machine. And the process is the same post, success, go get your paperwork preview and this time on the single headed plasma it's going to take 19 minutes that's it we try to keep it simple hopefully we've answered most of your questions you've had submitted if not you can email me or call me and I'll put the PowerPoint slide back up.
if you would prefer a one-on-one -on -one web session, I'd be glad to schedule something with you later. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.